Hey Deckers, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty is finally here and I'm pleased to report it is pretty playable on the Steam Deck. We'll kick off with our recommended settings and then we'll compare the performance of some of the other presets of why we think these are the best settings. Now kicking things off then, go to the quick preset and change this to low, then change the Intel XESS sharpness to 0.6 and set the super sampling to balanced. And then scroll down, we're going to change a few other settings, make sure motion blurs off, turn off contact shadows, put the androscopy up to eight, and then increase the level of detail to medium, and you'll be good to go. Now for the ultimate smoothness, you will want to cap your frame rate on the Steam Deck to 30. Ignore the Steam OS 3.5 bug there on an external screen, 60 is 30, and you'll now see that we have a beautiful looking image, very crystal clear and a pretty solid 30 frames per second. Now it will dip under that 30 very briefly in a few scenarios, especially in some heavy loading areas. But for the most part, even in heavy combat, you will see that this holds a rock steady 30. Now you can remove that cap if you want to deal with a bit more waving around and have a bit of higher FPS later. And we'll show that towards the end after all the other settings. But for the most part, if you want a steady, smooth experience, then this will get you almost perfect 30. I say almost perfect because when you are driving around, especially around Dogtown, there are some hefty loading spikes as it loads in the terrain. This only seems to happen once. If you do a loop once or twice, it doesn't have such hefty dips. So you will get a great experience. Again, pretty much solid 30 and mostly stable that we've seen. Now, if we have a look at the Steam Deck presets, and this is why I don't recommend using the Steam Deck preset, so using the default, but just changing the motion blur to off. Now I'm gonna compare the FSR2 version, which is the default, versus the XESS version. So the only change here is that both of these have motion blur off, but right one is the XESS, and the left one is the FSR2. Now you'll notice pretty much immediately that there's a lot more graininess, the FSR2 version, it's much more blurry as well. Once you start using the XESS version, it becomes very apparent just actually how blurry the FSR2 version is. You especially see it there in the smoke effects. It's really pixelated. But so if we look at the XESS, although we get a couple of extra FPS dips, that smoke, for example, just looks so much clearer. And again, if you look at the fighting going on in the background, things are much easier to define on the XESS version. Coming full screen on the FSR2, you'll see that we are hovering around that 30 FPS range. This isn't capped at 30, this is just all it's managing at the moment. You'll see occasionally we do go over that 30 mark. So the Steam Deck preset really struggling to hold above 30 anyway, so we would want to cap it. And same with the XESS version, we do seem to lose a couple of extra frames per second, the XESS, but it is just so much clearer. And you don't get the ghosting moving around either which is another reason not to have that motion blur on. This becomes a lot more apparent when we start driving around and so do those hefty loading spikes. As we start driving here, we'll kick it over to the left hand side so we can see the frames per second side by side. Again, you'll see consistently that the XESS will dip five to six FPS more, especially in those loading spikes. And overall while driving, it does seem to sit around two to three FPS lower. So this is why I recommend the lower presets, especially for XESS, as it is just a lot smoother. As we come full screen, again, especially through the center of the dog town, we get massive loading spikes, pushing it down to under 20 frames per second sometimes, even with the FSR2 and hefty jolts as that stuff loads. Now get the same on XESS, although you will notice once again that it does dip a little bit lower, so you're at one to two frames per second lower than the FSR2 version. Now for those thinking, well, we can pump it up to medium or have the performance mode FSR2, well, I'm afraid not. That FSR2 performance mode is ridiculously blurry and fuzzy. Again, looking at the kind of our recommended settings for the low to mid XESS settings with the frame rate cap off on the left, you'll see just how much clearer and smoother this is against medium, even with that performance FSR. But again, look at that smoke on the FSR2. It's absolutely awful. When we come full screen, Load to mid FSR2 again, looking pretty good, holding over 30 frames per second most of the time, especially in that heavy combat. And we get some nice effects from the explosion there. But as we come over to the FSR2 version, it's just so blurry. So performance FSR2 is definitely not recommended on any mode here. It was really difficult to play on the performance 
FSR2 with these settings because it was just so much more blurry and it's really difficult to see stuff in the mid to long distance and if you look at the people being shot up by that section there it's actually really really blurry again as you come driving it becomes even more apparent as we look at some of the detailing for the people and we actually get even lower frames per second because the medium graphics really take a big hit and we really don't seem to gain a huge amount of detail anything that we do gain is obviously lost with that fsr2 performance mode so back to our load to mid xess settings although 30 does give it a much smoother cap i do feel like getting that extra frames per second here and there is worth some of the extra dips for some reason it does seem to dip a little bit more when we are using no cap version but once again we see the fsr2 there full screen so blurry the medium settings definitely not recommended with fsr2 at all so you could go with the low and fsr2 but i really am liking just how much clearer the low to mid xess is no matter what settings we're running though to be honest even with our best settings here you are going to be maxing out the fan and sitting at around 84 85 degrees and anywhere between 27 and 30 watts on the battery so you're only going to get an hour maybe an hour and a half tops if you're on battery so you are going to want a power source close you saw how smooth it was with that 30 cap but if we do remove it and even if we drive it around in one of the faster cars in the city you'll see that we do get quite a lot of hefty dips but it still looks absolutely gorgeous let us know in the comments below if you're going to be diving into phantom liberty i've loved the story so far and there is so much more to do and more characters to explore if you've already completed the main storyline i definitely recommend the phantom liberty expansion if there's enough interest we'll look at geforce now down the line so let us know in the comments below if you're going to be going in on steam deck or on geforce now thanks for watching and see you in the next one